why your iPhone is in a duel to the death with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, how to take better and more professional looking smartphone photography and photos, stay till the end to find out the shocking secret for yourself that no one tells you, and which one is right for you, and which is going to survive and thrive in the new age of computational photography mad science. Computational photography explained, how computational photography is changing the nature of photography, but both sides have their advantages, how digital photography works and why it's obviating and changing photography as you know it. What is computational photography? It is a whole bunch of capture and processing techniques to improve and enhance your images. Yes, the software doesn't always work. You have to be in the right lighting and distance away, and sometimes it'll have problems like difficulties with depth mapping, but you can always fix that in post and make your photos even better with an app like Focus. Because the iPhone saves the metadata within, the iPhone can do all sorts of amazing things like changing focus and fixing any depth map issues. Basically, you can choose what you want to be in focus and what you want your photo to look like. You really have no excuse. Your smartphone takes incredible photos as long as you keep these things in mind. All it takes is for you to get out there and use your camera, figure out techniques, figure out lighting, and figure out composition and work hard at it. Anyone can become a photographer. DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have to do something so I could see them adding in to traditional photography, computational photography, just like smartphones have had for years. Apple Pro Raw Image Pipeline. Do you need to shoot raw on your iPhone? It doesn't make sense to shoot raw on your iPhone for most people, but if you're doing something professional with the photos, it definitely does. It allows you to adjust and edit them a lot more. Also, you end up with a much sharper image in low light, in my experience, using Apple Pro RAW. LiDAR is like a radar, but uses light. LiDAR has obvious applications in augmented reality for things like object exclusion, but the big advantage for photographers is that LiDAR can see in complete darkness, which takes care of many autofocus issues. Sometimes it's not so dark that you couldn't take a photo, but the autofocus bounces around, struggling to find focus. However, with LiDAR on things like your iPhone or iPad Pro, you'll be able to determine exactly how far away something is and exactly what position it is in, in complete darkness, which is crazy. The camera will automatically optimize the scene no matter what the lighting conditions. There is HDR and Smart HDR for dynamically adjustable and bright situations. Then there is Night Mode, which is for low light photography. We're still missing something between those two, which is Deep Fusion. Deep Fusion is computational photography mad science. How Deep Fusion works is there's constant buffering frames happening in the background before you take the picture. Once you press the shutter button, it'll take a total of eight images, four standard exposure images, and four short exposure images. And then when you're tapping the shutter, it takes one long exposure shot. And then from there, it enters it into the metaphorical matrix. From there, the neural engine goes to work. There are two primary elements. There is a reference frame and a synthetic long frame. With the reference frame, essentially it takes the best of the short exposure shots. The idea there is to freeze motion and extract the sharpness in the highlight detail. With the synthetic long frame, it blends three of the standard exposure shots with the long exposure shot leading to the end result of detail in the shadow and preventing noise. Key distinction, it is preventing noise, not applying noise reduction, which takes all of the roughly 27 million pixels, analyzes it, and then stitches it together, leading to the end result of a picture which is sharper with more detail and dynamic range with significantly less noise. Deep fusion works best in medium to low light situations. So in medium to low light situations, without something like deep fusion, it is pixelated potato town when you zoom in. Traditional digital photography tries to minimize this by allowing you to adjust other aspects and by making the image much higher in resolution. So each pixel is much smaller comparatively to help reduce this and other factors. Why don't you just apply post-processing and editing in post because they result in very different outcomes. You might think, well, why don't you just apply sharpness to the photo? Well, if you apply sharpness, you just get sharp noise. However, in most cases, you can get pretty close most of the time with the right hardware, software, and settings. Stay tuned to the end to find out my example that I'll show you to prove my point. Computational photography and traditional digital photography with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras remind me of the 
Apple's, it just works, and Android's infinite possibilities in infinite combinations. Or put another way, the age-old debate of hardware versus software. Or put another way, specs and manual control versus vertical integration of hardware and software. Image comparison, iPhone versus DSLR and mirrorless camera. Can you tell the difference between which and which? A and B. So which do you think is the iPhone and which do you think is the DSLR or mirrorless camera? Leave your comments down below. I'll have the answers in the video description. And at the end, no peeking. If you're not sure what to look for, look at the shadows and highlight area and the edging around the objects like the plate or the cookies. to see how the sharpness is or the bokeh, which is the blurriness. Please like, share, and subscribe for more tips, tools, resources, and tutorials like this and the best accessories for living on mobile. So did you learn anything new or come to any surprising revelations? Let me know. A is for computational photography, also known as iPhone, and B is traditional digital photography. If you liked this or found it helpful, check out this video next.